Hey, welcome back to Tornado Watch Trucking with Velox 18. Um, uh, there's no tornadoes today. Uh, they said it was going to be tornado weather. It just seems like a little rainstorm. Doesn't seem like anything major. I, I'm not where the severe weather is, I, I guess. Uh, it looks like it, it was actually a little further east than what they expected. Um, although maybe some more will pop up later this afternoon because they did say it was it would be in the afternoon hours and we're not quite there yet. Um, we got a, uh, a load. We got to go to West Memphis to pick up and I kind of got a boogie if I want to stop and get some lunch before we go because uh, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit of a jaunt to get there. It's just across the river from where I'm at, but for whatever reason, Memphis and West Memphis are uh, like 30 minutes away. Uh, but anyway, I almost got pulled off this load. I'll explain that to you guys later. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to roll the music so we can get on down the road. Let's go roll the music. to go trucking let's go trucking let's go trucking folks uh, so that I almost got pulled off this load because Cisco took so long to get me unloaded this morning I got here at 715 and at about 1045 my next load my next pickup they had been uh, calling me and texting me all morning and they said hey um, uh, the, the, the managers are kind of keeping an eye on this one they really are like worried about this so uh, we're going like I'm gonna have to pull you off the load if you're not out of there by 11 and I said uh, all right I mean I'm doing everything I can but there's nothing much more I can do than what I'm already doing and uh, and uh, they said uh, they said yeah no we get it but we're we're uh, this, this is like an extra, you know, kind of sensitive thing they got. Uh, I don't know if it's a new customer or if it's just a big customer or maybe a customer that they've already messed up with or something, but they, uh, sorry, those tracks are really rough. But uh, anyway, uh, they, uh, so I say all that to say that, you know, they, uh, they, uh, they were basically going to pull me off the load at 11 o'clock and, uh, and then the, the carrier rep I have over there was like, Hey, just text me as soon as you get out of there. As soon as you get out of there, text me and, uh, or as soon as you get a green light, you know, I, I wasn't even out of there yet, but I had a green light as soon as they were done unloading me. And so I texted him, at it, I got the green light at like 11.05, and he was like, boom, perfect, all right, I'm dispatching the load, we're doing this, he, and he asked me to send them my GPS coordinates and, and how much time it's gonna take me to get to the shipper and all of that, um, so they could, he, he could prove to his bosses that I was actually gonna make it there on time before 1 p.m., so, uh, so with that, I, uh, I sent it over to him, and we got, um, yeah, we got, we got headed, to this next appointment we got it dispatched to us and so uh anyway it was it was a bunch of phone calls and text messages and a little bit of worry but uh you know what i would have done if they pulled me off the load they would have had to start trying to find another another carrier right and they probably would have put uh some more money on the load so i would have just called them and booked it again as soon as i got the green light and uh <laughs> and and booked it for a higher rate, but you know, whatever. That that's uh, that's the risk you take, I guess, when you when you pre-book, and then it's the risk they take when they you know want to pull pull trucks off of loads and stuff. It's it's all a uh, it's all just a uh, a little game, a little game. But uh, the carrier rep was uh, he he appreciated my like you know sending them over the GPS coordinates and all that kind of stuff because um, it helped helped prove to his bosses that I was where I said I was and that I could make it in the time I said I could make it and uh, so anyway so he was just like you know appreciative and I just told him hey man like it's your guys's job to take care of your customer and it's my job to take care of you guys so kind of whatever that looks like we that's what we do that's that's how this trucking game works uh, the brokers got their customers they're they're my sales team out there selling uh, 
you know, getting loads and then uh, they're, they're brokering them to me so that I can um, focus on driving and I don't have to go out and have a whole sales team going out to uh, try and find new work for me every day and I don't have to cold call a bunch of um, shippers to find, to find loads for myself. So uh, I need them to keep their customers happy and I need to keep them happy and we're all, we're all, uh, you know, we're all kind of on the same side of things, brokers and, and, and carriers. You know, we're still, we're trying to make, we're trying to make, uh, uh, trying to move freight and, uh, you know, we're not necessarily on opposite sides. So, you know, we don't always need to be acting like we're, we're on opposite sides of each other when really it's, it's, uh, we're on the same side. Uh, we just have to negotiate, but we're all, we're all trying to move the customers freight and we're all trying to get that done. And if you look at brokers as your sales team, then you don't look at them as a, uh, you know, each negotiation is like, it's like a, an employee uh, uh, negotiation. If you've ever managed anyone, you're negotiating, you know, a raise with an employee. It's not like me against them. It's how do I, how do I like, you know, show, um, you know, this employee that, that they're, they're, uh, you know, they're valued, but still, uh, keep my profitability up as a manager. You know, that's, that's kind of how, how I view it. So when I'm negotiating with the broker, it's kind of the same thing. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm trying to save money here. I'm trying to make more money and uh, increase my profit margins. But at the same time, I value their work and I value what they do in this in this trucking thing. And uh, I get a lot of comments on my videos when brokers do things wrong, when brokers cause me headaches. You know, they say, oh, we need to get rid of brokers. And it's like, well, that, that would put me at a disadvantage as I'm driving my truck and, and trying to uh, run my business from the driver's seat of my truck. I wouldn't have uh, the opportunity to haul a lot of the loads that I haul because um, I wouldn't have time to go out and cold call all these shippers to find loads like the like the brokers do. So uh, yeah. Anyway, all right. I've been talking for six minutes straight. That's an awesome start to a video. If you're still watching this, I appreciate you. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. You made it through one of Nick's monologues, and that's hard to do. Even my wife falls asleep when I talk to her sometimes. <laughs> uh, all right. I'll catch up with you guys down the road. to come straight here to uh, to check in and um, mostly I mean it wasn't really like I decided like yeah, I without any right input but basically um, my carrier rep was like hey man if you're gonna stop because I told him hey do I got time to stop and get something to eat and he's like ah yeah but just just turn the tracking off when you do it because I don't He's like, we got like a hundred eyeballs on this load and I don't want them to, uh, I don't want them to, to, to worry, you know, that, that you're not going to make it or whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to skip it. I'm going to skip eating right now and I'll just hurry up and get over there. Cause if you guys got like a hundred eyeballs on this load, for whatever reason, it's really important to them that I got here, uh, on time. So we made it and uh, we made it before, 11, uh, before 1230 for a 1 PM appointment. So we're good to go. I'm just going to open up my doors and uh, we'll get back into this dock. And uh, oh, it's hard to do one handed, so we're going to, I'm going to cut you guys off. All right. So we got it in the dock. As soon as we put it in the dock, they got that uh, ramp down and they started loading it up. So we're looking good right now. Going to get loaded up quick over here at Coca Cola in West Memphis, Arkansas. And then we're just taking this load up to another Coca Cola up in Illinois about. 200 something miles away so uh 
yeah should be uh should be an easy day easy day of trucking just like i like it all right it's been about 15 minutes i had just turned on reed timmer um reed timmer the storm chaser from uh from tornado chasers or storm chasers or whatever he's called and uh got the green light so i'm gonna walk over here get my paperwork and then we'll pack it up and go home i mean not go home no we're not going home but we're gonna hit the road you know what i mean you know what i mean Vern? all right we're headed down the road leaving coca-cola we got a decently heavy load and um uh, Let's see if it says right here on the top sheet. Uh, 42,000 pounds, so we're loaded down pretty good. Uh, I used my uh, Blue Ink Tech scales, air scales, to, uh, to scale it right there before we left. And uh, so, yeah, it was, uh, it was good. We did good. We got like 32,000 on uh, on the drives and 33,000 on the trailers. So we're looking good, looking good. And uh, uh, I skipped lunch to get over here. And then, so now I'm kind of looking to see where it would be convenient to stop. But, uh, you know, we'll see. I may not stop for a while. I may get out of the Memphis area a little bit uh, yeah those all the tornado chases are down in Mississippi right now like like Jackson Mississippi Vicksburg Mississippi Indianola and they're keeping track of the storms down there it doesn't seem like they're, uh, they're they're not they're not they haven't had any tornadoes pop up yet but that's where they they, they think the uh, the storm activity is really going to be this afternoon, so they're all down there. I was watching some a couple different guys on YouTube. So anyway, we're 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 in the clear up here, uh, up here in Arkansas, Memphis area. So you know, we're good. So and then we're going to be heading north to Illinois. So I guess I can stop stop looking for a tornado. I guess one of these days. I'll see one when I don't want to see one. I'll come face to face with one. And it won't be as much fun as I think it's going to be, but I don't know. I don't know. All right. We'll get on down the road and uh, and uh, get up towards Illinois. We'll cut through Missouri and go up that way. And uh, yeah catch up with you guys down the road. it in over here um, by this Burger King I'm gonna run and get something to eat real quick um, kind of uh, kind of the way that I 
I, I, I thought I would park across the street and then I saw trucks parked over here and I was like, oh, I'll just swing in there and then it, it's kind of a mess over here. Um, but I've parked somewhere where I can get out without stepping in a puddle and uh, I'll go get some food in me and then uh, we, we're just going to go about an hour down the road um, to uh, Charleston, Charlton, Charleston, Charlton, I don't know, Missouri, right there by Sykes to Missouri. Um, so that's, that's the plan right now. That is the plan stand, Peter Pan. Uh, yeah, I'm hungry. You guys see the mess I just backed through? I just backed in through all that. I mean, the truck's already dirty because of all this rain we're going through, but yeah, then I went, then I went mud bogging, so whatever. I'm hungry. It was worth it. All right, just Got my uh, a double cheeseburger, no pickle, add barbecue, uh, not barbecue sauce, add uh, onion rings. It's like a double rodeo cheeseburger without barbecue sauce with ketchup and mustard. Good old BK. I've been eating this since I was like 16 years old when I got my, my first job at Burger King. I've been making a double cheeseburger with onion rings on it instead of pickles. And I like pickles, don't get me wrong, I love pickles. But something about, I don't know, gotta add the unhealthiness to the unhealthiness and it, and it just tastes better. Man, I want a papa to you. Man, I want a papa to you. They're over there complaining about all the trucks blocking the fuel pumps. Well, one of them's pumping fuel. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm gonna keep on getting down the road, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna just drive for a little while longer, and uh, hopefully. I like driving through puddles because you can't see what's underneath them. You don't know how you know how deep it goes. You don't know, yeah, all that stuff. A little, little skittish, man. A little skittish. But all right, good. All right, we good. We good. All right, I'll catch up with you guys down the road when we get to uh, the Flying J that we're gonna stop at tonight. All right. All right. We made it over here to Charleston. Charleston, Missouri. And uh, we'll get right here to this Flying J where the Huddle House is. And, uh, and uh, we'll park it up for the night. Park it up for the night. And we will... Uh, Chill out, man. Chill out. It is only it's only four o'clock, so we're cutting it. Uh, we're we're stopping we're stopping early today. But then again, we started pretty early. You know, we started at five o'clock, so still an eleven-hour day, uh, most of which was spent at Cisco Foods in uh, in uh, Memphis. So. This is, uh, yeah, it's still a pretty decent, pretty decent day of trucking. It was easy, but it was, you know, it was still a decent day of trucking. It's still a decent day of trucking. But I'm going to get in here and get parked up and then uh, we'll see about... Uh, taking a shower and and uh, eating some Huddle House a little bit later on. I just had lunch like an hour ago, but um, you know, I didn't I didn't eat a big a big lunch because I knew I was eating a late lunch and didn't want to ruin my dinner. But uh, anyway, so I'll just 
get on over here into the area I like to park and uh, although I, I always dislike parking spots where I where where I where the, the nose of the truck points down it's always hard for me to sleep I feel like I'm gonna fall out of bed if it if the if the if the trailer is leaning down I don't mind that one so much I almost feel like I should nose into one of these parking spots but uh, whatever I'll just park it up right here and uh, call it good call it good try and stay out of this big old puddle if I can oh and not park where the light pole is don't want to do that Close out this video next. Alright guys, this is where we're going to cut the video off. And uh, it's a little bit of a shorter video. Uh, but I guess not that short considering how much I talked at the beginning. So, uh, you know. You got... You, you thought you were getting a shorter video, but really it's not that short. I just, uh, I just won't edit as much of my talking out. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're... Uh, we're just parked up right here should be a nice uh, nice night of sleep and um, I'm not gonna be taking off very early in the morning because I only got uh, like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that to get up to um, to the uh, delivery so um, and we're delivering to a coca-cola um, plant just like we picked up from uh, so it's just like a, a product transfer for them so they'll probably get it off the truck pretty quick um, it's not going to a grocery warehouse or anything like that where it's going to take a bunch of time for them to count up the cases of Coca-Cola. It was, it's all like 24 packs of Coke. I used to drink a lot of Coca-Cola. Now I drink Diet Coke, but, uh, I don't know. There's a point where I would have thought about, you know, this would be a temptation for a pallet to fall off the truck or something, but <laughs> no, I'm just never, never would I ever, uh, Believe it or not, I can afford to buy some uh, some Coca-Cola. It's not that expensive. But uh, anyway, all right. We'll, sh we'll shut the video down now. You guys will have to tune in tomorrow to find out how the delivery goes. And uh, there goes a nice little Kenworth. I like it. I like it. But um, yeah, I, I can't remember what else I was going to talk about. But uh, that that ongoing tornado threat in Mississippi is still going. I'm, I'm keeping track of it even though I'm up here in Missouri and I'm about to cross over into Illinois in the morning. Um, I'm, I'm pretty far up here, so nothing I have to worry about. It's just a little s sprinkle and drizzle right now for me, but um, Miles is still down you know, at school in Oxford, and so right now all the storms that are being tornado warned are keep staying south of him, and um, so I don't, I'm not like, I'm not worried about it. I just, I'm kind of a weather nerd anyway, and then so I'm kind of like just watching, keeping track of things, and then uh, of course, if I hear anything, I'll make sure uh, I text them. Of course, they're at a school where they're going to have all kinds of warning systems and everything like that. They've got tornado shelters in like every building in the whole place. Uh, they've got somewhere, uh, a room without windows in the center of the building where everyone can go to. So uh, I'm not really worried about him, but uh, just, you know, it's my kid. And uh, and I'm watching, I'm watching a bunch of tornado-worn storms go like, uh, from Jackson, Mississippi, Yazoo City, they're kind of like running diagonal um, south of where he's at in Oxford. So anyway, and we were just north of where he was in Oxford. We were up in Memphis, so we were like northwest of him. So we had a little taste of it this morning. Uh, Could have, we had a somewhat decent little storm roll through uh, when I was sitting at Cisco. But uh, other than that, it's been, uh, we, we've just been getting this little drizzle and stuff all day. So uh, anyway. Amateur meteorologist, uh, Velox18, signing out. Uh, love you guys. Peace out. See you tomorrow.